Good evening, I'm DK Rostov. Welcome back to the TTT News. Question, how does Trinidad and Tobago practically plan for a future that involves developing its people and products in a manner in line with international standards? Enter the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. Assistant Director, Technical Cooperation Unit at the Ministry of Planning and Development, Deborah Dipchansing, she joins us to discuss the SDGs, their importance to TNG, and how they tie into our national development strategy. It is time to go in depth with me, DK Rasta. Welcome, Deborah Dipchansing. How are you? Fine. Thanks to be here. Happy to be here. Our supreme pleasure. But let's start from the ground up, please. What are the Sustainable Development Goals? Well, DK, to understand the SDGs, we really need to take a look at where they came from. The SDGs are part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And sustainable development is really about development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the future generations. And it's also not a fixed state of being. It's more like a, a process of change in which the use of resources, direct investments, even technological advancement and governance are made consistent with both present and future needs. So it really requires meeting the basic needs of all persons and still extending the opportunity to them that they can fill their aspirations for a, a better life. The 17 Sustainable Goals, Development Goals, are a blueprint. It's a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face, including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, just to name a few. And the Sustainable Development Goals are also known as the Global Goals, and they were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty, to protect the planet, and to ensure that by 2030, all people would be able to enjoy peace and prosperity. And DK, you know, they are designed to motivate all stakeholders, including civil society, industry, politicians, academia, and individuals. And they are also integrated so that action in one area will undoubtedly affect outcomes in others. And that development has to be balanced, has to balance social, economic, and environmental sustainability. So we in Trinidad, we are a part, we are a member of the United Nations, and we have given our commitment to sustainable development. And, and we are part of a collective journey to the year 2030. Therefore, uh, we as part of that world community, we also need to do our part towards reducing the waste and the pollution, respecting the rights of all, as well as stimulating the economy to support the provision of services and infrastructure. And that's just to name a few. And with all you've given just now in terms of that explanation, Deborah, I can still imagine someone saying, okay, well, you say it's a blueprint, you said we signed on, but why are the SDGs important? Well, the SDGs are important because globally, there has been increasing public concern about the impact of issues such as rising sea levels, uh, malnutrition in children, the use of pesticides and agricultural chemicals, the overexploitation of raw materials and natural resources. And in light of such global issues, DK, the member countries of the United Nations recognized that there was a need for an agenda with targets that everyone could work towards while also acknowledging the sovereignty and you know the diverse realities of all countries so for countries such as ours trinidad and tobago the sdgs also represent a platform through which we can address the unique vulnerabilities of and the challenges that we face um, as it relates to sustainable development and being a small island developing state so this shared sdg agenda is actually a collective response to global issues, global challenges, with countries being encouraged to develop their own pathways to achieve national targets. So for example, if we were to consider goal one of the SDGs, that speaks to no poverty. And this is essentially 
where you have a sustainably managed environment which is necessary for socioeconomic development and poverty reduction. And the natural environment supplies goods and services. It provides income, it supports job creation, and alleviates poverty. Yet, DK, do you know more than 700 million people still live in extreme poverty globally? So, by doing something as simple as donating what you don't use instead of creating waste by throwing it away, you are actually helping to achieve goal one through poverty alleviation. So in terms of looking at saying, I, and I could still see someone in Trinidad and Tobago saying, well, those 700 million people below the poverty line, uh, that, that is well and good. But what kind of benefits will these SDGs have for members of society? Thanks to benefits, they are really aimed at all groups in our society, be it globally or locally. Since the SDGs represent a vision, an ambitious vision actually, for a safer, healthier, and more prosperous world. And the SDGs reinforce that in the implementation of our government's initiatives, programs, and projects, no one should be left behind in this drive towards a sustainable future. And this includes a vision of a world where there is good health care, provision of quality education, access to clean water and sanitation, thereby resulting in improved living conditions and a better quality of life for all our citizens. And the SDGs, they also highlight the paramount importance of protecting our planet so that... Okay, it seems as though we're not hearing you as well as we'd like to at this point in time, but we are speaking about the... Provision of clean and affordable energy, the protection of our flora and our fauna, as well as, for example, ensuring that production and consumption are done as responsibly as possible. And the SDGs, you know, they also represent a concerted effort towards the creation of a peaceful and prosperous society where citizens can benefit from reduced inequalities, improved employment opportunities, increased economic activity, together with the potential to unlock opportunities in business and industry through innovation and infrastructure. And the SDGs also represent a move towards making our cities and our communities more sustainable, one where each individual can truly feel safe. Now, one of the things that I want to get into would be how do the SDGs tie into Trinidad and Tobago's National Development Strategy? But we do that on the other side of the break. We are speaking with Deborah Dipchan Singh, Assistant Director, Technical Cooperation Unit of the Ministry of Planning and Development. Stay with us. This is In Depth with me, DK Rosta. Welcome back. We are speaking about the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs. We're doing so with Deborah Dipchansing. Now, Ms. Dipchansing, now, how do those SDGs tie into Vision 2030? That's a great question. So, arising out of a commitment to establish a successful and development path, a successful development path for Trinidad and Tobago. The current national development strategy, which we commonly refer to it as Vision 2030, is Trinidad and Tobago's comprehensive national development planning framework, which basically provides the vision and the context for our development process. And as such, Vision 2030 um, has five thematic areas that we focus on. And if time permits, I could probably just run through them very quickly. One is putting people first, nurturing our greatest asset. Secondly, developing, delivering good governance and service excellence. Improving productivity through quality infrastructure and transportation. And fourth, building globally competitive business. And fifth, placing the environment at the center of social and economic development. So Vision 2030 DK builds the pathway to the future that will transform Trinidad and Tobago into a developed country, sustaining growth and development and improving the quality of life for all of our citizens. And Vision 2030 makes it clear that there, we really have crucial changes that must be made in order for us to experience that economic, social and environmental improvement and transformation. But as to how it links to the SDGs, 
In crafting Division 2030, the SDGs were given considerable, were given extensive consideration uh, by Trinidad and Tobago. And we purposely interconnected and aligned Vision 2030's national goals to the SDGs. So, for example, if we were to consider theme one, which is putting people first, nurturing our greatest asset. In terms of the alignment to the SDGs, you'd see it's aligned to SDG one, no poverty. SDG two, zero, hunger. Three, good health and well-being. Four, quality education. Five, gender equality. Six, clean water and sanitation. Uh, seven, reduced in sorry, ten, reduced inequalities, and eleven, sustainable cities and communities. And even now, Vision 2030, we are in the process of reviewing and updating it in order to better meet the evolving needs of our citizens. And this has become even more crucial in light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which has raised so many concerns in areas of health, poverty, inequality, education, and the country's financial resources. So in order to address these challenges, the Roadmap to Recovery also provides numerous recommendations that are grounded in three key pillars, which are, that serve to anchor and support the country's development aspirations. And these speak to diversifying and transforming the economy by leveraging the digitalization, making food security a reality, and leaving no one behind while creating greater equity. Now, looking at food security, leaving no one behind, transforming the economy, those three pillars. Also, looking at the fact that even before the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals, there were the Millennium Development Goals, work has been happening in Trinidad and Tobago. But with that in mind, Deborah, what are some of those key achievements that Trinidad and Tobago has made thus far towards those Sustainable Development Goals? And what are some of those things in place to ensure that countries are achieving their targets, those 17 goals? Absolutely, decade work has been ongoing. Uh, so since the adoption of the 20th gen 2030 Agenda and the SDGs, the United Nations has convened an annual meeting with heads of state at a high level political forum on matters of sustainable development. And this two week long series of meetings form part of the follow up and the review mechanism in place, wherein countries are encouraged to conduct regular reviews of their progress towards achieving the SDGs. And this, these reviews are formally called the Voluntary National Review Process. And as the name implies, countries can exercise the option not to participate. However, there are significant benefits for participation. And this review process supports and it facilitates the sharing of, of countries' experiences in, a, in pursuing the achievement of the SDGs. And this speaks to the successes, the challenges, and the lessons learned. And, and it also facilitates the identification of measures to, to accelerate implementation, to strengthen policies and government institutions. And also, and very insignificantly, it facilitates the mobilization of multi-stakeholder support and partnership for the implementation of the SDGs. So in this regard, I am pleased to share that on July 15, 2020, Trinidad and Tobago successfully presented its very first voluntary national review on the implementation of the SDGs. And we did that at the High Level Political Forum. And due to the pandemic, the event was held via video conferencing. And the Trinidad and Tobago delegation was graciously hosted by the United Nations resident coordinator at the country team's office in Port of Spain. At that time, our national review would have considered eight of the 17 sustainable development goals. And those would have been SDG three, which spoke to good health and well-being. SDG four, quality education. Five, gender equality. Eight would have been decent work and economic growth. 10, reduced inequalities. Uh, 13, climate action. 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, and 17, partnerships with the goals. And our VNR would have revealed that Trinidad and Tobago has been making positive strides in each of the eight SDGs, and that we are progressing towards achieving the wider 2030 agenda. So if I were to touch on two of those that we would have reported on, 
uh, let's say SDG 3, Good Health and Wellbeing, which reflected that there were significant enhancements made to the infrastructure to support the universal healthcare system, the, with parallel improvements in the number of physicians and nurses in Trinidad and Tobago. And we also looked at SDG 4, which was quality education, when we did our voluntary national review report last year. And we saw that citizens have access to free primary and secondary education. The education system has also been modernized through the introduction of both a school and learning management system and a school-based management standards, both designed to improve efficiency and service delivery. So DK, going forward, it is notable that the preparation of the VNR also enabled Trinidad and Tobago to identify areas in which continued work on the SDGs is required. And this is of critical importance in light of this being the United Nations Decade of Action, which emphasizes accelerating sustainable development efforts. But in terms of accelerating and doing that, it is one thing to say, okay, well, the ministry or the government or people in policy making decisions are doing one thing. But how does the ministry incorporate the SDGs into this fabric of society so that people feel vested ownership and can take it upon themselves to be part of this process? So, yes, so the Ministry of Planning and Development, we have recognized that the implementation of the SDGs is a formidable challenge. Given the scope and the complexity of the 17 SDGs, as well as the inherent 169 targets. So, achieving this progress really requires working across all the policy areas, as well as engaging with multiple stakeholders, creating that enabling environment for action at both the local and the national levels. So, in addition to incorporating the SDGs in the national planning process, as I mentioned via Vision 2030, the Ministry has been in, and we continue to be engaged in activities to raise the awareness of the SDGs through the use of the Ministry's social, social media platforms. Because we recognize that public awareness is critical. It's critical to ensure that all sectors of society possess a sense of ownership of the 2030 Agenda and understand the potential benefits of their participation towards the achievement of the SDGs. And, you know, the realization of the SDGs involves the active participation of all our stakeholders. The SDGs cover so many issues relevant to our daily lives, including responding to vital challenges such as the poverty, climate change, quality education and healthcare. So Trinidad and Tobago's success requires engagement and partnership and perhaps more significantly, ownership of the SDGs by the various stakeholders. And, the, and this includes civil society, private sector, academia, the community-based groups, as well as citizens, you and I. So the actions of citizens and organizations towards achieving the SDGs are essential to generate that unstoppable movement we're looking for, to push for that required transformation. And our report, our BNR report that we did last year also highlighted positive interventions that have been accomplished by both the private sector and civil society towards not only the achievement of the SDGs, but to ensuring that no one is left behind. So I would like to make particular reference to Canary, which is the Caribbean National Resources Institute, which alongside other project partners under the CSOs for Good Golf project they launched the SDG Catalyst Network. And even DK in recent times, we've seen a recent demonstration of the effectiveness of collective action, community mobilization, civic engagement, as it relates to poverty reduction and building that inclusive society, wherein we saw various activities undertaken by groups and citizens across Trinidad and Tobago, who reached out and assisted vulnerable families who were you know, negatively impacted as a result of that COVID-19 pandemic. So really, it is important for us as citizens to recognize that changes in our behavior and in the decisions we take on a daily basis can contribute to our country's, to our country's economic, social, and environmental advancement. All right, and so with that, instance, we want to thank you so, so much. Instance, simple individual initiatives are to buy and eat seasonal produce from local farmers. Donate what you don't use, such as clothes, books, furniture, food, 
shop local. What about supporting community businesses using a refillable water bottle? And, de and, and, definitely, and definitely with that move to, and these are very common sense things, but sometimes simple doesn't necessarily equate to easy. And it's not easy for me to say, but our time in this conversation is over at this point in time. But we want to thank you so much, Deborah Dipchansing for giving us that, that starting, that foundation of understanding with regard to the Sustainable Development Goals. And on behalf of the entire TGT News team, I'm DK Ronstan. Thank you for joining us.